welcome back to the studio and I'm painting Mountain Splendor and using Bob Ross oil paints. And for this project, I'm going to be using two one inch brushes, one of which I'm going to use for darks and the other which I'm going to be using for light colors. So let's get started with our prep. This is just liquid white and I cut my canvas into four and I want to apply a thin even coat to each corner of my painting and really spread this out well. You don't want the canvas to be really too wet and use your fingertips. Uh, the little fingerprints are actually quite useful if you just touch the canvas and you want to be able to look at your finger and see all the little ridges in your fingerprints. They shouldn't be filled in but if you touch on the canvas and it looks well a little bit like this sort of a little bit underfilled then you need to put a little bit more on and it obviously shouldn't look like you dipped your finger in some ice cream so let's just speed through this bit and finish it off with long flat even strokes really even out the surface and I can't stress this enough you want to get this dead right I'm going to use this brush again and I want to dry clean it on some paper towel no need to dip it in thinners just a good toweling off will do the other thing I like to use are these. They're just map pins. And I like to use them to mark out where my horizon line is going to be. I just measure down, I use the length of a one inch brush from the top of the canvas, and just push that little pin in the stretcher bar at the side. It gives you a very quick and easy way of remembering where the horizon line is without drawing a line. Here's my palette, and there are all my colors laid out for you. And the very first color I'm going to mix is a, an orange color. I'm going to use Indian yellow and a little bright red and mix this up well. You want a really lovely fiery orange color for the sky. And I'm using that same brush that I put the liquid white on with. So I just went into that orange color. So the same brush. And as I say, the horizon line is just there. I'm going to go just above it and build up the color. You want a really good, rich color. I'm going to have some water, so I want to reflect this down below. So it's a mirror image. Don't forget, long flat strokes and really try and keep them nice and flat, not dipping in the center. Now, time to add another little color. So I'm going to go into some bright red, same dirty brush that I just used, but just bright red on its own this time. And back to my canvas, and I'm going to go just above that lovely orange color. And this sort of bright red color I'm going to put on here will go a little bit on the pink side, but it's actually a very useful color. The next color I'm going to be putting on is some blue and blue and yellow. Well, they make a lovely green. Great for Mars, but not for my painting. But the red acts like a little bodyguard. It separates the two and prevents you getting too much of a green tone in your sky. Blend this really well. You don't really want to see where one color stops and the next one starts. Well, that brush I was just using is going to be my light colors for my highlights. So let's put that to one side. And with the other clean, dry brush, I'm going to go straight into some Prussian blue, just a little tiny bit. I just want to put just a hint on my brush to start with. I don't want to overload my painting with a really strong blue color. And I'm going to start in the top corners and blend it in well. Now, don't forget there's liquid white there. So this color is going to go pastel. But if you think you've got too much on your brush, don't waste it. Put it down in the water and just blend it in there. And that way you can sort of work out some of the color and you can just blend this across and make it as pastel as you like. And let it come down and just bump into that red color. Remember, I'm gonna be painting a mountain on top of this sky. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about doing sort of lovely clouds and things. There won't be enough room for it by the time I get that mountain painted with the trees. So back to my palette, and this time I'm going to go into a little bit of the Midnight Black and a little Prussian Blue. And I'm going to use that brush now to darken the bottom left corner and the top left corner. And that's because I've got, well, I've got a nice tree coming along on the left hand side. And I want the, the highlights to show up. And against a pastel blue sky, well, they may be a little bit lost. So I think ahead a couple of moves and darken my sky just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'm going to use my palette knife with again more Prussian blue and more midnight black. And I want to mix up a really dark inky blue color here. And this is for a little mountain over on the left hand side, sort of a, a filler mountain. And well, things didn't quite work out as I expected. Yes, I forgot to hit record. But never mind, I've done a little stand-in for you just for practice. I'm gonna butter a piece of toast. Yes, I always tell people that if you wanna practice your palette knife, start with a piece of toast and a little even roll of butter and just see if you can butter it very thinly. And there goes another little mountain peak coming along there now. So there you go, no problem. And that is how I buttered that little mountain. Now with that same dirty blue brush that I had for the sky, just pull out some of the excess paint here and just sort of blend out the bottom edge of that mountain. I want it to look like it's sitting on a little misty patch. There we go. So just blend that down into the horizon line. So time to make up for my little mistake and paint a big mountain. So I'm starting out with the Prussian blue some midnight black, a little Van Dyke brown, and a little bit of crimson here. And again, I want sort of a nice dark blue-black color, but with a little bit more warmth to it. And yes, this time I did hit record. So you want to start off with a nice even roll of paint. See how I slide up from the bottom of my paint? I always pour my paint out flat when I'm using a palette knife, gather up a small roll of paint, and think about the position of the main peak. Not quite central, but maybe a little off to the right. And again, just like buttering a piece of toast, firm pressure, maybe design where you want this to be, put a few little humps and bumps into it. Aim for those pins, that's where the base of the mountain wants to be. And as I said, firm pressure, really push this paint down into the canvas. You're looking to just stain the canvas, you're not leaving a great big thick line of paint behind. And that I think is something that a lot of people do and get wrong when they start painting their oil painting mountains. They, they just leave too much paint on the canvas and run into trouble later on. And you can see here, I'm just gonna scrape out all the surplus paint, but pressing it into the canvas all the time. Okay, time to remove the last of the paint on my mountain. I'm gonna use that blue brush that I used for the sky. And you can see I'm sweeping the paint over to the right pin on that right side of the mountain, just removing surplus paint, pulling it down, and then I'm gonna sweep the paint over to the left, but I'm gonna keep the majority of my dark color at the top of the mountain. Don't drag it all the way to the bottom. I just want it to look like it's sitting on a little bit of a, a misty patch at the base. And again, let's just speed through this bit shaping my mountain as I go. Time to mix up a little shadow colour and I'm taking some of the base colour for the mountain. I'm going to add a little bit of titanium white to it, maybe just a touch of crimson just to warm it up a little bit and this is going to be for the shadow side of the mountain which is the left side of the mountain. For the right side of the mountain I'm going to actually do two colours. I'm going to use a little bit of the dark sienna a little bit of base mountain color and a little bit of the titanium white here. I want a sort of a soft brown color, a little bit on the warm side. And see, I leave my paints very undermixed. Now, time to decide where to divide our mountain up. I want shadow on the left and highlight on the right. And I'm gonna just put in a suggestion of a line, just an idea. And I always say that the person skiing to the left here going to have his jumper on he's in the cold whereas the person skiing to the right is in highlight he's going to be wearing his sunglasses so we'll be breaking shadow to the left and highlight to the right now let's load some paint on our knife and see how we get on by the way the filler mountain he doesn't get anything when you're planning out your mountain sketching on a little design is very useful and as you can see Simple to remove as well. Now, there we go, there's a little shadow color on my knife, and it's just a little roll of paint. 
just a tiny little bit and super light. You just want to hold it with the finger and thumbs and just balance it on the tips of your fingers. No fingers on the backs of knives. You want to almost have it so gentle you could drop it. So let me see if I can do a little bit more paint here. Just drag it down the mountain. And finish off with a nice sort of stroke. Get another little roll of paint. And again, finger and thumb, no pressure on that knife. You can see that I just keep it gentle and glide it across the surface of the painting. And well, because the dark color underneath is a bit sticky, it'll grab this highlight from your knife. And I sometimes shake my hand just to get the paint to break a little bit more. But always nice flat strokes with the knife. There we go. And try not to go back and repair it. You'll undo so many lovely little effects. I've reloaded with that brown color. And you can see that I want to go in with the knife at a bit of an angle, not too flat, not too steep. About 45 degrees is about the optimum. And just again, touch, no pressure, from the point of the knife up to the peak of the mountain. Just touch, no pressure on that knife at all. Just use gentle pressure. And again, just drag the knife down. And it's really two movements in one. You start with the angle a little bit steep and then you flatten the knife as you go down. So it takes a little practice, a bit like patting your tummy and rubbing your head. But with practice, you get good at it. You see each stroke I'm aiming for the pins at the side of the mountain. Candle up and then flatten as you go along. If you're enjoying watching me paint this mountain, don't forget to like and subscribe. Just hit the little bell down in the corner and give it a thumbs up. It really helps me grow my channel. Now pay special attention to the fact that I've left lots of the original dark color coming through, a highlight color in brown and a shadow color, but all three are still clearly visible on the mountain. Don't over highlight it. But time to put some snow on our mountain peaks. Back to the palette. I'm taking a little bit of titanium white and I'm warmed it up with a little bit of that orangey color we started the sky with. Just a hint, just to put a little bit of warmth into it all. And again, a small even roll of paint. Essentially don't put on too much on your knife. And again, I'm gonna to go to the peak of my mountain again. Kick your handle out and touch, get a little bit of a stickiness on that paint so gentle just let it glide down the mountain and that dark brown color and the dark base color really sticky they'll grab this color and they'll take what it wants and give you back what it doesn't want and again don't lose the original colors here just let it glide on painted a little letter j there it's a little sweeping stroke and now pull out that paint go over to the right and say so this is all in highlight drag that paint and let it break. I start with the knife steep and I flatten it as I drag over towards the pins. There you go, nice and steep and then flat. Steep and then flat. So steep and then drop the handle of the knife. Aim for that pin. Here's a little close-up of my mountain. You can really see those colors are all quite well mixed, but that's a little area of my painting which I pay particular attention to, that little dark outline. Sometimes you see it on paintings and it really kind of ruins the mountain. So I always make sure I go back with a little bit of my snowy color here. And I just want to lose some of that little black outline at the peaks. It really just stands out. It makes the, the mountain look like it's been cut out of another picture and, sort of glued on with a bit of a dark outline. So I always, always make sure I retouch those edges and make sure my mountain touches the sky. Sometimes it's nice to come back and adjust your mountain. And I want this little peak here to stand out a little bit more. And here's a useful little trick. Use your palette knife and some of the original dark mountain color and just go up under that little bit of snow and just touch and just pull the paint away to the left hand side. So you're putting in a deep shadow just to the left. You want that 
little peak to look like it's standing in front of the one behind it. So just increase that darkness. There we go. And you can play backwards and forwards with these mountains and never be afraid to have a little play. And if you undo something, oh well, you can just take your power knife, scrape it off and have another go. And a little bit of dark colour underneath that snow line there to create a nice little ridge and a bit more highlight on it. And while I'm at it, let's fix that edge and see where my original knife work was a little bit ragged, which is why I don't fix it until I've got my highlights on. And last thing, I'm just going to dry clean my dark brush again. And I want to just tap out the base of my mountain. You see where my, my knife strokes sort of ran out of paint? I just want to soften this down and soften to the right and again just want to really kind of settle the mountain down make it look like it's sitting on some mist now sometimes it's fun just to add a little bit of extra light color to your brush a little bit of dirty titanium white and just to tap that in create a little bit of more of a misty effect at the base of the mountain but follow the direction of the mountain follow the lay of the land left and right and then just soften out the last little bits of the mountain, blend that out, and that's it. Unfinished mountain. Join me for part two of Mountain Splendor. I'll drop a link down below to that. So from me and Henny, happy painting people. <laughs>